Hello and welcome. My name is Kathy A. And today I'm going to do a show about CoverGirl. And of course, CoverGirl is a drugstore makeup here in America that we've had for centuries, it seems. You know, it's just been always been there. A lot of us, it was our first makeup. Uh, Maybelline and CoverGirl and Max Factor. Um, and Cody, I think we're like the only three, maybe Revlon. There weren't very many choices for makeup uh, back when I was growing up in the 1960s and early 70s. And so CoverGirl was um, such a popular brand. And uh, so I thought I would do a little bit of a docutorial, as they say. <laughs> It's a documentary first about um, CoverGirl and where it came from and then when I come back I'll do a tutorial part where I will show you how I went from a plain face to this face and um, we'll be back with you shortly so enjoy the documentary. People have always enjoyed going to the beach and 1909 in Ocean City, Maryland was no exception. Of course, when you go to the beach in summertime, you run the risk of getting terrible sunburns. So many of the tourists who came to vacation at Ocean City would go and visit this man, Dr. Eugene Townsend, and ask for help and relief from their terrible sunburn. He developed a cream from camphor and menthol and eucalyptus, and he named it Townsend R22. Now this cream was um, actually very popular amongst all of the vacationers and he wound up giving the formula to his friend George Bunting from school, in medical school. George Bunting had uh, owned a drug store in town and he thought it would take some of the heat off of him if the tourists went to the drug store and picked up the formula there. George Bunting took the formula and with the coffee pot in his kitchen created a creamier version and bottled it under the name Dr. Bunting's Sunburn Remedy. After he'd sold several jars of this one of his clients came in and said hey that really knocked my eczema out hence knock eczema no eczema noxema and a new product was born he put it in the cobalt blue glass jar and he sold it or a sunburn remedy for all the tourists and then the locals. It was considered initially a medical product but then women started to notice that after they used it for their sunburn their skin felt better. By 1920 the company was so large it moved from its humble beginnings in a small pharmacy to a huge warehouse factory. They added new products like suntan lotion and shaving cream. Noxema continued to be sold as quite a nice beauty cream and was touted the miracle cream of Baltimore. There was even a record contest made where you could make up your own lyrics to the music to the Noxema rag. They added an antiseptic skin toner at this time and of course they put out these ads in the 1960s where Swedish model asked Joe Namath to take it off, take it all off. And a parody of this was done in a Super Bowl ad in 1973. They started to get celebrity endorsements but it was still ultimately a sunburn cream. We lost Dr. George Bunting in 1959 and his son Junior took over the business. This year 2014 celebrates 100 years of the Noxema company and so ends the story of Noxema. CoverGirl was actually an experiment that was put out to a test panel in 1958. It had such success with the teen girls that they launched it in 1961 as a new brand of makeup that was medicated. Of course there were only six products in the line and they decided to use models like Jennifer O'Neill and Sybil Shepard and later Cheryl Teagues to show the fresh, clean, natural looking face of what a cover girl should be. 
This was hip and edgy and just about everything you'd want was then created from the line. It was very popular, very innovative, and it was very affordable. In the 1970s and 80s, Christy Brinkley brought a new face to CoverGirl and they brought Stephanie Powers in to show the older women that they could also wear this very accessible makeup. They brought Jennifer O'Neill back 20 years later and they also mimicked the fashion of the day like the Princess Diana look and they introduced different colors of eyeliner pens and pencils and they made it look very very elegant. Their new headquarters were part of the new rise to fame and fortune. Easy Breezy Beautiful became their slogan and they decided to cross the racial barriers and introduce women of color and different, different ethnic backgrounds into their makeup line. They hadn't up to this point shown any women of color. Procter & Gamble bought this line back in 1989 and they also own Olay so they decided to combine CoverGirl with Olay and make Ellen DeGeneres their spokeswoman. Now this was somewhat controversial at the time because Ellen is a vegan and they asked her about the possible animal testing that Procter & Gamble did for some of their other products. So Ellen called PETA and got the word straight from them that CoverGirl does not test on animals. CoverGirl was involved with a lot of charities and other actually very positive things. Talia Joy, a young makeup uh, fanatic who was battling cancer, was made a honorary CoverGirl and she unfortunately passed away in 2013. Queen Lativa was given her own line of makeup known as CoverGirl Queen, the Queen Collection. Sofia Vergara was brought in to sort of um, spice up the Latino uh, sales which were failing at this time. And Pink was brought in to bring that edginess and modern look to the line. This all rounded off quite nicely and CoverGirl became politically correct. Except when Taylor Swift's uh, eyelashes were photoshopped in a mascara ad, they were taken to task and the ad was banned from publication. CoverGirl makeup has come a long way and most of the products no longer contain those medicated ingredients such as the Noxzema ones. There's a lot of new lines coming out such as the bombshell and more rock stars have gotten on board and they've collaborated with Catching Fire, the Hunger Games film for specific and very identifiable makeup types. And we owe this all to a bunch of sunburned vacationers in Baltimore, Maryland in 1909. Wasn't that cool? That was, um, it was so interesting learning about Noxzema actually. I knew that there was Noxzema in CoverGirl makeup so I figured you know what I've got to go beyond CoverGirl and go into Noxzema because that seemed like it would be an interesting story too because it's, I mean who would think to put all those things together and create a skin cream like that and you can still find Noxzema in the stores uh, you have to look for it but it is still there and uh, I, I think I'll try some you know it's been a while since I've tried I want to try it on some dry skin and see what happens and uh, I remember the cooling sensation from the sunburn we used to freak out actually it was so cold when you put it on it was like this shock that happened but I think most of us um, in my generation remember Noxzema quite fondly or maybe not so fondly, but um, I think the good news is, is that uh, CoverGirl makeup no longer smells as bad as Noxzema did. And it's a whole new generation of products that are uh, definitely worth exploring. So um, now without further ado, I'm going to do a 
tutorial using all CoverGirl products. So through the magic of video, let's go back in time and I will see you in a few minutes. Okay, here we go. The whirlwind tour of CoverGirl. We've got the serum primer right now. This is a fairly new product. It smells really nice. I'm just tapping it into the lines and nooks and crannies, going into the Eye Rehab Concealer, which is a light salmon color. That's actually very moussey feeling. It blended really nicely. Um, it did not conceal that well. I'm trying to put it on that age spot. I'll go back there like three or four times in this little demo. But uh, I'm going around my nose. Um, my face, I've been wearing this stuff all week, and my face actually was breaking out, and I haven't had breakouts since I was a teenager. This is the CG Smoothers BB Cream. It's actually CG Smoothers in new packaging called BB Cream. It's very, very light. I would say, uh, since there is an SPF in there, that you could use it underneath a makeup, but I wanted to use it as a makeup, and that was kind of a mistake because it was so thin. I got literally no coverage out of it at all. It felt okay, it blended nicely, but there was no coverage. On the other side of my face, I'm using the CoverGirl Advance Radiance Foundation. This has an Ole inside of it. Smells very nice. It's a, uh, a very pleasant uh, surprise on that because I always thought all the CoverGirl cosmetics would smell like Noxzema. So I'm just putting it on this half of my face and I'm using a Real Techniques brush to kind of buff it in. It blended in very nicely and it did not sink into my pores. Uh, the color, there I am, I love the color, wafting up there. Um, I'm blending it down on my neck towards the decollete a little bit. Nod, nod, wink, wink. And I'm just sort of uh, buffing it in all over the rest of my half of the face going to check in the mirror just along the hairline underneath and all the wrinkles make sure it's okay I had to do a little extra checking because the uh, side with the BB cream just wasn't covering at all this is the uh, advanced radiance pressed powder it's an age-defying product. Again, this smells very nice, and it actually worked very well. The sun keep go keeps coming in and out um, of the doorway, so it brightens my face up a little too much. Sorry about that. But I do love this powder, the Advanced Radiance Powder. For bronzing, oh, wait a minute. I see an age spot. going to have to go over that. I roughed up the age spot. There we go. Okay. So now for the bronzer, we're going to go to the True Magic, the Sun Kisser. And this is a cream bronzer, which I was suspicious of at first. But once I started using it, I really liked the blendability of it. The color was very natural. Um, it just seemed to go on very nicely and smooth out very and blend evenly. There's a real high quality feeling to this. Now on the other side, I'm using the Clean Press Powder, which is part of the original line. This is a dark shade. It's for somebody with darker skin. I don't like the smell because it's like Noxzema. I'm using a brush to put this on. It does not blend very well at all. I'm using it down there. I'm just not happy with it at all. And the smell wafting down is really bothering me. It looks choppy. It doesn't blend, and it seems to be an unnatural color. It's going back. Now this is the CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones Blush Trio. You get a highlighter, a, bra a blush, and then you get a darker shade that you're supposed to go underneath your cheekbone with. I did not use that one. There's a slight sheen to this and a slight smell. It's sort of Noxzema-ish, but it's very subtle. I'm trying to blend it in a little bit. And now this top, I do like the highlighter portion of this very much. I thought it, it stayed all day. It looked really nice. I'm using it on the inner corner tear duct area, the third eye, just above the cupid's bow. I really like that highlighter. And this is another uh, Cheekers color. It's a little bit darker red. I'm just going to put it on. Because there's such a shimmer on the other one, I thought I could put it over the top a little bit and cause a little more color and take the sheen out. 
I'm going to take some more of that powder and go over that because it's just a little bit severe on the blush color. And I roughed up the H spot again, so I'm tapping that in. Now these two eye enhancers are quads of shadows. I could not find any matte eyeshadows at all. I'm using the lightest shade on my lid and I'm just using their little applicators that came in the uh, product. I'm taking it all the way up. I probably shouldn't have because there's a light sheen to it. I thought it was matte but then I'm noticing it's not. Going into the uh, this is the bronzing powder I used earlier that smells like Noxzema. It's a matte shade of light brown, so I'm going to use it in my crease because there's no matte eyeshadows. I needed to use something that was light brown just to anchor the eyeshadows so it's not all one big shimmery hot mess. Going into the pretty periwinkle, I'm putting that in the outer half of my lid. That's from the Urban Basics Quad that I'm holding right now. Now the eyeshadow quality is not bad, but the shimmer just takes so much away from it. Now I'm just going in the outer corner crease area with a little of the medium dark purple. And I'm going underneath to line my eyes with the medium purpley violet color. I'm just taking it a little at a time. And now the really dark color I'm going in the outer third of my lid and taking it up just to the crease and maybe just a little bit over the crease and I'm using the applicator that came with it. This one is called Blossoms and it's more purpley pink shades. I'm using the light pink on the inside of my lid and I'm using the darker pink in the 10 and 2 position there up underneath my brow. I'm using a clean brush with nothing on it to kind of blend everything together a little bit. Some of the colors literally disappeared when I did this. I'm just checking to see that everything's even and I don't think it is. I'm trying to blend it out but it looks like one eye has a little more than the other so I'm going back in. I'm going to put a little bit more on here to try to even it out so it looks like the other side. I think I got it there. And I'm going under the eye with a little of the pink. Why not? Okay, this is called Ink It, the Perfect Point All Day Eye Pencil. It's a very unusual thing. It is a twist up top, but it's got a little plastic casing on the outside of the eyeliner, almost like a condom. <laughs> and it's very scratchy and hard. So um, I think it holds it because it's such a liquidy kind of stick pencil. Uh, this casing is needed so it doesn't break off, but it's awfully uncomfortable to put on there. Now here I am twisting it up and making a face. And I'm just kind of blending that out with a small brush. I'm going to curl my lashes. And I wait usually 8 seconds on each side. Now this is the Bombshell Volume Mascara. I really like it. It's in two parts. Part one is this big old honkin' caterpillar size brush with product. This is put out in their Lash Blast line, which has actually got some good stuff. Now this big honkin' caterpillar uh, brush is on one end, and on the other end we have a slightly different brush. I have a feeling the product is the same on both ends, and just the vessel that you deliver it with is different. So I'm really giving it a good go over. I'm going all the way down to the root of the lash and up and out and shimmering it out. Shaking and shimmering back and forth trying to get some volume. And this does a pretty good job of giving some volume. It does last all day. I didn't find any flecks on my eyelids. Okay, we finished with part one. Turn it over part two. and Unscrew it there and we've got a different shaped brush. It's more spindly. Um, there's more space between the tines, so I have a feeling that you're putting the same product on your eye for coat number three, but because of the way the brush is shaped, it separates and keeps your eyelashes from clumping. I really like this mascara a lot. I forgot my eyebrows, so I'm going to this cream bronzer. I know, 
a little strange, but I'm using an eyebrow brush and I'm just going lightly over. I'm not a big eyebrow gal. I just want to not look too sparse in the eyebrow area. So I'm going over it and I actually filled it in quite nicely with a natural looking um, light brown dark blonde color. Now this is a lip liner and it's called Splendid. It's a very light kind of pinkish mauvey color. It's lighter than my natural lip color but I, I like to have a lip liner on before I put lipstick on. And I've got these two Smoochies lip balms in lieu of lipstick today. The lighter shade one um, is it's called True Love and then the the brighter shade one, the one I like, that one is actually called Smooch. And I'm putting that lip balm on. It feels really good. I really like these lip balms a lot and in trying them out even after coffee they stayed on pretty well. Going into the lip gloss, this is Wet Slicks Gloss in number 330 and that also feels great and looks good. I really like it. Nail color today is number 240. I've worn off the uh, the name of it. Had it on all week and just a little bit of problem. And so here's the finished look. This is the cover girl face. Although I'm not sure what cover I would make with this face. <laughs> anyway, um, you know I was just pleasantly surprised by the fact that most of their products do not any longer smell like Noxzema, which you know is a terrible, awful smell. These Olay products are uh, very emollient, very nice, um, and the uh, I really enjoyed the foundation. The, uh, the primer serum, it seemed like wherever I put that, the makeup didn't go on very well, so uh, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe the uh, primer wasn't so great. I was loving this powder. I thought the powder was very, very nice, very rich, uh, creamy feeling for a powder, and uh, I probably will not return that. Now, I've heard mixed reviews about this cream bronzer, and I actually really liked it. I thought it, it blended much more naturally than the powder uh, version, which, by the way, the powder version also smells like Noxzema, and it's absolutely horrific. Whew. I never liked the smell of Noxzema ever. Anyway, this was nice. I thought it was really uh, pleasant. I decided to use that to do my brows with and I thought it did a bang up job. The eyeshadows all have shimmers in them and it's really horrible that they do that because they should have some matte shades to blend in. And so what I did was I used this matte powder as a crease color to kind of ground it down a little bit and then I use a combination of these two palettes to sort of um, add a little pop and color to it because you know pinks and roses and orchids and things are very popular right now so I thought I'd give these two a try but I I honestly don't care for uh, CoverGirl shadows the purple was quite nice um, but when I started to blend I noticed they started to disappear so it was really uh, um, very strange. Um, I didn't care for this this eye pencil at all. It felt very scratchy going on and um, I didn't like the plastic casing around it so I would not um, purchase this. I do like very much the bombshell mascara. I think it was just a it's terrific and you can actually just go with with version one the big caterpillar um, mascara wand side you could just do that side and you'd be fine. Or you could um, just do part two and nothing else. It's, it's probably the same formulation, it's just a different shape brush and I really liked both parts. So combined together I wound up putting three coats of mascara on so that probably uh, added to the, the volume and length thing. <laughs> But uh, I wore this all week at work and I had very little issues. The, the foundation stayed on all day. It turned just slightly oxidized, just a teeny bit, maybe not even a half shade. It oxidized just a teeny bit. So, um, you know, as far as drugstore brands go, you usually do get that kind of 
oxidation, you know, the Oompa Loompa thing, but this, when it did oxidize just a little bit, it, it warmed up a little bit, and because I had it all the way down into the decollete area, everything matched, so nobody noticed it so much. I noticed it because I put it on, it was a different color. Now, there's about 30 different shades of these uh, smoochies, and I love both of the ones that I have. I thought they were excellent. They stayed on. Uh, they're creamy. They, um, they're very subtle colors, very nice for just a wash of color, and I absolutely love the nail polish. I think this is more the color of spring this year rather than orchid, <laughs> but I really did love this nail polish, and this has been on for four days. And I did filing, and yep, the tips are a little bit worn, but I think with a top coat, um, this could be really good. I'm really, really pleased with, with that. I'm also very happy with the vanilla flavor um, wet slicks. I thought this was a very, really nice uh, lip gloss. So all in all, uh, I was a little disappointed in the blush that I got. These had shimmers in them, but the highlight was quite nice, and you can still see it. That's a very pleasant highlighter. This was a little too dark and shiny, and I didn't want to put that down in that area. Uh, the blush was okay. Um, that didn't blend as well as I had wanted, so I was a little disappointed in that. But um, So that's my CoverGirl face, and I hope that um, you've enjoyed this one. I certainly enjoyed looking up uh, all about this makeup brand because it's something that's... Uh, from my childhood, you know, it was something I really wanted to uh, explore. So, I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend and have a great week. I will see you next week with yet a new special. <laughs> and I have a, some exciting news for you pretty soon, too. So, have a beautiful day, everybody. Take care. Toodles.